Okay, in this video we are going to have more understanding about residual drift and why the criterion or this criteria has been uh, uh, implemented in the new code. Okay, the standard does not require checks on residual drift for structures less than 200 foot or 73 meters in height. This is an important issue. Okay, so whenever that, even that I have some like um, some uh, some comment regarding this because um, it is very a little bit weird to me actually that for buildings less than this height that we do not have any criteria for residual drift because commonly in existing structures and existing buildings we can find residual drift is there and we need to have a criteria for this but anyway anyway this is what ASCE is mandating now and what is uh, doesn't give any criteria for uh, or the uh, it doesn't give any criteria for the residual drift for building less than 73 meters in height okay so this is number one number two residual drift is the unrecoverable portion of transient drift as we said before that commonly occurs when a structure undergoes an elastic response so there is an intuition here something important here that whenever you have <clears throat> the um, residual drift in the building this means that this building is undergoing an elastic response an elastic response means that it goes if we have the, the famous pushover curve capacity curve of the structure then the system is maybe here maybe here maybe here because it undergoes an elastic response so it is an indication for the inelastic behavior of the building and as you can see here for any two successive floors here we have <clears throat> the two points were here and then there is permanent interstory drift that is going to take place due to this jump as we have said before and this is going to make the interstory uh, or the residual uh, drift uh, or the interstory drift to be permanent after the earthquake or at rest after or following the earthquake at the rest condition of our structure it is computed as now how we can compute it <clears throat> it is computed as the absolute value of the largest difference so we have the word absolute here which is the absolute value because sometimes we have the building for example it is here so the building goes in this direction okay sometimes this point maybe it can go to this direction and this point go to this direction okay so we are talking about the absolute here the absolute value how much difference between the two successive floors okay the largest we're talking about the largest of course difference of the deflections of vertically aligned points they are like as we said here vertically aligned points at the top and bottom of the story we're talking about the story under consideration along any edge of the structure we're talking about the edge of the structure you can come here for example and you can get it or obtain it following completion this is important following completion of the structure's response to earthquake motion because as i have said to you it is like the building is at rest here okay I mean that it is there is a permanent uh, permanent kind of residual drift here because the structure is stopping so we are going to find the structure is as if as if it is inclined something like like this so this means that there is a residual drift okay <clears throat> okay now residual drifts are an indicator of potential incipient dynamic instability as we said this means that there is some dynamic instability Okay, and structure engineers should always check for it and take care of it. Okay, because from inside, this is a building, real building actually, and uh, you can find that this is after or following the earthquake. You can find that the columns here are inclined. This means that there is a kind of permanent, permanent residual drift is being there, and also you can find it maybe here something like this. We're going to find there is a kind of uh, residual drift also from the outside 
Limiting residual drifts is an important consideration for post-earthquake operability and for limiting financial losses. This is very important because the structure that is going to suffer from this permanent residual drift is not going to be operable. It means that we cannot operate the same building or structure as it was before. But actually such performance goals which is the operation of the building post-earthquake and the financial losses and so on. These goals are not included in the scope of AC7 standard, right? Because as you know, that there are different standards for, for this. If you are uh, interested in this kind of stuff, you can go to the FEMA 58. We have two releases, FEMA, 50, um, FEMA uh, 58. 2018 as far as I remember okay and you can find this is the second edition because we have another edition which is 2012 okay so this is the last edition you can find the other consequences okay taking into consideration the post earthquake issues but again for ACE we are dealing with and you need to keep it in your mind that ACE is dealing primarily with life safety limit state life safety limit state for risk category one and two buildings okay for risk category one and two if you do not know what is the meaning of risk category one and two please refer to the videos that already uh, I have explained the meaning of risk category the ASCE 7 standard is primarily meant to ensure the protection of life safety as we uh, as I have said shortly so this is some understanding of the residual uh, drift and consequences of it and why it is important to be considered. Design practice for tall buildings, however, has routinely included limit, limits on residual drift. Okay? One important reason for this is that many tall buildings are located in dense urban areas. This means that residual drift is commonly used to judge the post-earthquake's safety of damaged buildings. If you have an idea about it, TPI or Tool Building Initiative document, you are going to have an idea of what I'm talking here because in Tool Buildings we are considering this residual drift as one of the important criteria that needs to be met whenever we are designing Tool Buildings. If Tool Buildings exhibit large residual drifts after an earthquake, and consequently appear to be unstable this is a very important issue because whenever we have a very tall building commonly if it is inclined or lean back or forward uh, you feel that it is unstable it's going to fall down or something like this so this could prompt building officials to cordon off large areas and this is an important they are going to make or they are going to cordon off the building itself the area of the building around it they are going to cordon it off because uh, it is unstable, seems to be unstable, imposing hardship on many people and businesses as well. So the tall building community therefore designs to reduce the probability of such occurrence and I'm sure that those of you who are designing tall buildings, they know well about, about this. Okay. AC7 adopted the acceptance directly from the recent practice of tall building exceeding 200 uh, 40 foot or 73 meters in uh, the 2022 edition to be compatible with common design practice for these structures okay so this is like common way for for them in order to be like similar to what the tool building officials or tool building initiative said okay <clears throat> this is actually something extra only to avoid how we are going to avoid ASC uh, the residual drift <clears throat> and this is for the existing uh, structures so if the uh, like residual drift uh, already happened this is another issue but now I'm um, like talking about retrofitting some retrofitting techniques before the occurrence of an earthquake for our existing structures because as you know that most of our existing structures they have been designed before the implementation of strict design guidelines and um, and regulations so we are most of our buildings they are suffering from uh, from this so we need to like retrofit existing structures in order to 
take into consideration or to prevent the occurrence of residual drift. Okay. So this is an example, retrofitting example for existing structure to avoid residual drift. It's actually one research that I have done before. And this is simply the point or the idea is whenever we have a building, okay, you are going to like provide some retrofitting scheme for it. And let's assume this black frame is going to be here to uh, retrofit the existing building. And we are going to add some retrofitting connection which is in green line here. This retrofitting co connection, it is a little bit complicated. I do not want to dig deeper into it because really it's a little bit complicated. But anyway, inside this kind of retrofitting connection, we put some damper and some springs and so on. And they are, these kind of springs, they are like trying to recenter the building again. So if the building goes in this direction, the frame from outside is going to like bring back the uh, structure to the plumb uh, uh, vertical condition means that it is going to bring it back, recenter it back to the center line. Uh, and when we have done this study, we found that this is the original earthquake, for example. I think it was for 10% in 50 years. <coughs> so this is a design earthquake, like for return period of 475. So there was, as you can see, residual drift here. But after adding the retrofitting technique we found that the no residual drift for the building and for another level of earthquake it was like in two percent and 50 years means that 200 or 2475 uh, years return period the structure the bare structure without retrofitting it was like suffering from a huge residual drift but after adding this kind of technique or example of retrofitting we found that almost there was no uh, residual drift. Actually, this is only an example. There are many examples in research fields. Uh, there is a wealth, actually, of examples and retrofitting examples. Uh, you can find it. This research, actually, you can find it uh, here. I'm going to give, like, the references for this. Uh, references for um, recentering retrofitting of structure to avoid residual drift. This is a very nice paper, actually. You can find it. It was released, I think, 2014, but it is really uh, a very good state of the art at that time uh, for self centering seismic lateral force resisting systems. It's very nice and it has very good <coughs> uh, references inside it if you are interested in this area. And this is actually my, uh, my paper as well. It is called performance-based seismic retrofit of RC structures using concentric brazed frames equipped with friction dampers and disc springs. And this is an engineering structures. If you want, this is the, the link of it. And if you want, you can use the QR here. Sorry for using this here. You can uh, like get the PDF, the full PDF of this, uh, of this research. In the introduction part, you are going to find a very good um, literature literature review of the existing um, uh, references <coughs> and studies regarding recentering till 2021 okay this is the end of this uh, of this video thank you for uh, listening and see you in uh, a future video